Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple windowsill light box. I've made a few of these before but they were very simple and the boxes were really ugly so I decided to remake one that is just better in every way. I will be turning this fan drawing from the Phantom of the Opera into my light box. You can use any drawing or image you want but I went with this one. I absolutely love this drawing, so you should definitely check out the artist on Instagram. She has really beautiful art. But without further ado, let's get started. First step is preparing the paper to the proper size, and since I wanted this project to be simpler, I cut my papers in half. This won't be like a normal light box, so things have to be cut differently. And then later I realized that the proportions were a little bit too tall, so I chopped off some from the top and I got the perfect size of paper that I need. After I finished cutting my five pieces of cardstock into ten layers, I draw a half inch border around all of them. These edges will fold back and attach to the box later on. For now, I can start on the design. I broke my drawing up into ten layers to know what goes on what layer. This is important because it helps keep you organized so you don't repeat things or put things in the wrong place. And I personally like to start with the background first because if you mess anything up then it's easier to fix it because it's not the focus of attention. I sketched out the jagged rock formations of a cave and since there are candelabras all over the background I added one on this layer. And once everything's sketched out I can start doing line work. And now would be a good time to explain what exactly this project is. My normal light boxes have an LED strip to light things up. This project will sit in the windowsill and the sunlight will light it up on its own. But leaving the layers all blank and white would be really boring, so I'm adding a bit of color to them, like creating a 3D drawing of sorts. It's a bit more simple and a bit more fun if you enjoy drawing. For the line art, I just use my pen and I go over the pencil lines that I drew to try to get a nice, thick, clean line. Now it's the fun part, coloring. I have this really cheap set of colored pencils, which has a wide range of colors. I start by going through them and trying to match the colors the best I can to the reference photo. I got lucky because this package has many shades of blue, and once I found the colors, I started with the lightest blue, and color the backmost layer. I originally wanted to use watercolor for this project, but it really warps the paper pretty bad, so I would recommend colored pencil or something else. And for the candles, I use a darker blue and some yellow. And once I colored this layer, I can start cutting it out. You want to cut along the pen lines. The pen actually creates a nice little indent in the paper, which makes it easy to cut along and you can go back later and touch up the edges if you mess up anyways. After carefully cutting out this layer, I have to make four more. If you look in the background of the drawing, you see the cavern, and in the distance it's light blue, and as it gets closer and closer, it gets darker. I can create this look with my layers by using a darker shade of blue for each layer that comes forward until it becomes pure black. This is by far the easiest part of the process, but you have to make sure that the cave opens up with each layer so that the layer behind it can show. So you just have to cut the layers more and more open each time or else it doesn't work well. There is another candelabra on layer 7 and I make sure to color it the same blue as the other one so they match. There was more of these in the original, but I didn't want to crowd the background too much, so I only added two. Now that the background layers are done, I can start on the more interesting layers, and I continued working from the back to the front, which means the chandelier is up next. And again, it all starts with sketching, drawing out everything and flipping the paper and holding it against the light to make sure everything looks even and symmetrical. And this is where I started to add some 3D elements to this project. You might notice that I only drew out two arms of the chandelier when there should be many more. The reason for this is that they will be attached with foam board in front and behind to create depth. Let me show you. Here I drew out all the remainder of the arms, two small ones for behind and two big ones in front. 
And now I can cut tiny little cubes of foam board and glue the arms together to make two sets of arms that I glue in place. And this layer is all done. Now I can start on the foreground. Starting off with the boat, I drew guidelines for the wood on the sides. I'm gonna do the same 3D details as before, so this main part of the boat is simply the wood boards of the side of the boat. Oh, and one thing to keep in mind is when making something like this, you have to leave a slight border around the whole page before cutting it out, because you need a little edge when you fold the side pieces back. So that's an important detail to make sure you include. But anyways, I'm working on the 3D parts now, which is the seat and the scorpion wood carving that holds the oar of the boat. I tried to make the line art more interesting by thickening it in places and adding shading, and I had so much fun with this whole thing. I haven't had this much fun drawing in such a long time, and it was just super fun and enjoyable. Now I'm gonna start coloring. I went in with a reddish brown because I thought it would look good with the red cushion and I tried to match the drawing as well. I added hints of other browns and black but mostly that reddish brown and of course the cushion is a bright red with shading as well. And once I was happy with how everything looked I cut out the pieces and attached them with foam board like I did earlier. You can buy this foam board for a few bucks at Hobby Lobby or Walmart, and it lasts a long time and it's perfect for these kind of projects. And here it is done, and you can see that border that I was talking about earlier. I make these on all the layers except the background layers. And the final layer before I start on the people is the layer of the water in the very front. This was really quite simple, just do the line work, and for the colors, I mix some browns, blacks, and different shades of blue to add depth to the water. And now finally, I can start on the two people. I start off by getting a good sketch, because if my sketch looks ugly, then the characters will too. This is the part that's the most tricky, and if you really don't feel confident in your drawing skills, you can trace or even print out the original as long as you don't try to sell it or anything, and cut it up and make this. But I wanted to test my drawing skills, so I freehanded it all, and I think it turned out nice. I will do everything the same as on every other layers, except making the hair of both characters and the guy's cloak as 3D pieces. But while we're here, let me tell you all the story of the Phantom of the Opera, since this is the art that I chose. Once upon a time in 1880s France, there was a young girl named Christine Daae. She had a beautiful voice and traveled a lot with her father. During their travels in France, she befriends a boy named Raoul, but their friendship ends when she has to leave. Years later, when she's a grown-up, she's invited to sing in the place of the lead singer in an opera at a famous opera house that is said to be haunted by the opera ghost, since there was a mysterious death that happened. She performs and it's a success, and her old friend Raoul is in the audience watching. He recalls his love for her and tries to talk to her backstage, but she mysteriously vanishes. The Phantom demands that Christine can sing the main role in the play Faust, but is ignored and suddenly the main singer dies and a chandelier is dropped in the audience, killing someone during the performance. The Phantom, named Eric, kidnaps Christine from her room and holds her prisoner for a few days to force her to marry him. She unmasks him and sees his deformed face and he fears that she will leave him, so he keeps her hidden for weeks. She demands to be released, and he agrees as long as she wears a ring and is loyal to him for the rest of her life. Christine runs and tells Raoul and asks him to take her somewhere and hide her forever. He agrees, but Eric is listening and is enraged. The next night, he kidnaps her again and tries to force her to marry him or he will blow up the opera house. Raoul is led by a man called the Persian to help find Christine. The Phantom finds them and takes them to his torture chamber, where he tries to drown both of them. When Christine sees this, she agrees to marry him and they share a kiss. Eric tells her that it's the first time anyone has kissed him. Even his own mom would run away from him. Christine feels pity for him and they cry together. 
Eric allows Raoul and the Persian to escape, but he makes Christine promise that she will come back on his death day and give his ring back and that he will die soon of love. And as he promised, she returns when he dies and helps bury him. Then she and Raoul elope and are never heard from again. So yeah, that's the story. I've never heard it before now, and it's a lot different than I thought, but it's very interesting. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. But getting back to the project, I finished up the Phantom and Christine. The last piece of this whole thing is that ore that sticks into the water. I make it quickly and have it sturdier, but bleh. I make it quickly and to have it sturdier, I glue it on another piece of cardstock and cut it out again so it's two layers and it's thicker. And here is everything done, now I can start assembling it together and making the box. The first step is to cut off the corners of all the layers and fold the flaps from earlier back. I also colored the back side of the flaps black to blend into the seam better. Now I can make the box. I have this thick colored cardboard that is sturdy enough for the box but it will still cut with the knife. So I found this nice shade of blue and started measuring out the sides. I made one big piece that wraps around so there is only one connecting seam. This allows me to attach the front and back in separate pieces and has a cleaner finished look. And this is a pretty color, but I wanted it to look worn and darker, so I went over the whole thing with a dark wash of watercolor. I mixed dark blue and black and just lightly went over everything. And once that dries, I score along the lines and bend the box into shape. And now you can see why those flaps on the layers are important, because I used them to glue onto the side panels. I have to score the cardboard and use lots of glue to keep it in place. It's a little bit of a struggle near the end when you have one side left, but after a bit of struggling, I managed to make everything fit together nicely. And now I can move on to the front and back pieces. I measured out the right size and make them both one inch bigger on each side. This way it lifts the box off the ground and I can add more intricacies around the edges. Which is exactly what I want to do. I thought it would look really nice if there were some nice carvings on the corners, like a pretty picture frame or something. So I got some paper and I created my design, then I used this to trace it onto all of the corners, and then I hand cut the design out. It was pretty hard to cut through this cardboard, but I managed without like ruining anything, and it turned out okay. And after quickly giving this whole thing a darker wash again with watercolors, I got some tracing paper to cover the back hole up. Because you don't want to be able to see through the back out of the window or whatever. Now I can attach the two pieces on with lots of glue and scoring both sides. And now it's all completed and I'm really really happy with how this turned out. It makes a really nice window decor and it's easy to make and a very fun process. So yeah, that was it for this video. Let me know what you think and if you enjoyed, please let me know. Bye!